Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, this is Archbishop Perez with a special message recognizing the incredible work of the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. In 2015, its founders were inspired by the World Meeting of Families and the visit of Pope Francis to create a pastoral ministry in Philadelphia for the benefit of families facing relationship crisis. The foundation ministers to struggling families and individuals through a confidential prayer line, pastoral appointment with priests, retreats, and much more. I'm deeply grateful for the work of the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation. In a short time, it has already strengthened and sustained hundreds of families. For more information about this pastoral ministry, please visit the website on your screen and join me in praying for families throughout a local church. May God bless you abundantly. Hi, and welcome to another podcast from the St. Raymond Donatus Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. This is Ann DeSantis, joined by the board president, Mickey Kelly. Mickey, thanks for joining us on this podcast about 10 saints. Hi, Ann. Great to be here. And I'm very excited about our topic today, which is the subject of a recent movie release, and that is uh, St. Francis Cabrini. And let's face it, I mean, there's much to unpack in this uh, 30 some minutes um, on this podcast here. That's right. That's right. And I will remind everybody, too, that this is our 10 Saints Part 2. The reason I say that is Mickey and I did a whole other series of 10 podcasts on 10 different saints. And this is like the second part of that. So we did another 10. And this is actually our last podcast in the series. So I want to encourage you to go back and watch those other ones on our YouTube channel, on the Philly Nonatus YouTube channel. And as Mickey said, this is a really good topic. It's very relevant because many of you know, or maybe you've even seen the movie, the movie called Cabrini by Angel Studio. Now, I'd like to start out by reading the bio. It's a short bio of St. Francis Xavier Cabrini. Now, this is coming actually from the Cabrini EDU website. It says that Francis Cabrini, are, uh, the university, which Cabrini University is actually um, not going to be in existence after this year, but it's for now it's still around. Um, the namesake was born on July 15th, 1850, in the small village of Sant'Angelo, uh, Laudingiano, Italy. Enthralled by the stories of missionaries, she made up her mind to join a religious order. Her dream was not easily acquired as her frail health held her back from joining the Daughters of the Sacred Heart, the order which ha who had been her teachers and mentors. It, undeterred in 1880, Frances founded her own order with seven other young women, the Institute of the Missionary Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. She and her sisters wanted to be missionaries in China, and despite all obstacles, she visited Rome to obtain an audience with Pope Leo XIII. And he said, but to the West, to New York, rather than China, as she had expected. She was to help the thousands of Italian immigrants already in the United States. In 1889, New York seemed to be filled with chaos and poverty. And into this new world stepped Mother Frances Cabrini and her sister companions. Cabrini organized catechism and education classes for the Italian immigrants, and provided for the needs of many orphans. She established schools and orphanages despite tremendous odds. Soon requests for her to open schools came to Francis Cabrini from all over the world. She traveled to Europe, Central and South America, throughout the United States, and she made 24 transatlantic crossings and established 67 institutions, schools, hospitals, and orphanages. That is amazing. On December 22nd, 1917, in Chicago, she died. In 1946, she was canonized a saint by Pope Pius XII in recognition for her holiness and service to mankind. Today, the missionary sisters and their lay collaborators can be found on six continents and 17 countries throughout the world, wherever there is a need. 
and you can learn more at mothercabrini.org. Now, thank you for allowing me to read that. I know it took a minute or two, but I think it was important for us to read over the facts of her life. Um, I did see the movie Cabrini. Actually, I saw it twice. Mickey, I know you saw it. You and your girlfriend, Hannah. Um, tell us your take on Mother Cabrini and especially on what you thought about the movie. Sure. And so first of all, um, I did write an, a review with Catholic 365. Um, we'll include that hopefully in the description for hopefully it's included in the description um, under this video here for anyone who would like to read an honest take about the film. For, first off, for those of you who are curious, um, I really enjoy the film. Um, I understand some people are like, you know, kind of shaky about it because uh, there were some aspects of Cabrini's like life, especially like her reliance on, on God. And, you know, that was kind of this, that was kind of like omitted for some reason. Maybe there'll be director's cut in the future. I don't know. But what I do know is this, is that what I can see from the Cabrini movie is that St. Francis David Cabrini, she was a trailblazer, you know, for the Catholic Church. And, you know, she established something, you know, an empire of hope that she described it as a way to help those that are marginalized, you know, from someone that came from Italy, when she came to New York, see how the Italians were being treated you know, in these ghettos, these slums. And I think one of the like, couple of powerful scenes that I really enjoyed from the movie was one was the scene where she meets with these important big shots that I like to call them. And they're like, you know, wealthy and everything. And they want, like she want to establish a hospital to ensure that no lives were to be lost in a in a tragedy like what happened that you know kind of like got the wheels turning and you know sent her in a different direction. She helped so many people in her lot like in her lifetime, despite you know having post TB, you know syndrome and what have you. You know, some people say like it does promote feminism. It does not. From what I saw is that Cabrini, she did have to overcome some challenges from the clergy, politics, and everything you could really think of, you know. And what I saw from this movie is that, like, you know, it takes a woman, you know, like, you know, St. Francis or Cabrini, you know, to, to, to change the tide. And that's what she did, you know, even to her final moments in life. She was a she was a overall she was a trailblazer. She never gave up. She was determined, and she got things done. Yeah, well said, and uh, I agree with what you know what you expressed. Also, I apologize for a little tech di difficulty there during what you were speaking of, and um, I'm sure that we will reiterate some of what you just discussed. But anyway, yes, I agree with you wholeheartedly because she was a trailblazer and. Think about what life was like in New York at that time. And I know that during the movie, there was one portion of the movie where they showed what life was like for the poor there, the Italian immigrants, and how she cared enough to want to do something about that, right? Her, her first thought was that she wanted to go to China. And when she went to the Pope and begged him and said, listen, let me go to the East first. I, I need to go to the East. And he said, no, I need you in the West. I need you in New York of all places. I mean, the biggest city in the United States. Right. And at that time th there was one set scene in the movie when she went to an extreme by contacting the New York times and to try to have an article written about what life was like for the kids. I didn't know if you wanted to share about that because if somebody didn't see the movie, obviously they'll learn about it. But I think it was a really like a clincher part of the movie of how um, it was able, people were able to learn the truth of the matter, right? The truth of the matter about what was happening. Yes, and I feel like you, know, you have to keep one thing in mind that before you had television, before you had the internet and all that, you basically had newspapers. And if you think about it, the newspapers, they were probably maybe a lot thicker than you see now. 
And I say that because that was basically the most common um, way to get your news. Like, and of course, they had a morning news and they had a like a like a night edition, so to speak. When Saint Francis David Cabri discovered these conditions, and she almost she practically almost died, you know, from you know being exposed to those conditions. But what happened was that she reached out to the New York Times and this reporter, uh, Theodore Calloway, you know, came with her, shadow with her. And little did she know, she was going to have New York come to her and they're going to give her money so that she could, you know, establish an orphanage for these children and try to make them like try to get them a little more in town as opposed to the, the slums. And over time, like, you know, they, they actually grew to, you know, eventually, you know, wherever their, their home was, like, towards the end. But I think what happened was, like, she was told, don't solicit money from the, like, other people, but just get it from, like, within your group. But she knew that she had to think a little more creatively. And that's what led her to, you know, there's like a, there's actually a, quote that the world is too small for what I'm about to do and let's face it you know like I said like I said we said earlier Cabrini is challenging I'm sorry she was a trailblazer she was determined she was dedicated to her duty and that was to help the marginalized even St. Teresa of Calcutta was inspired by her that she would eventually find a missionary as a charity but she also will help people in Calcutta and we all have to find our con- con- Calcutta's these days. You know, for St. Francis of Cabrini, she founded in Five Points, New York. And eventually, you know, she would expand, you know, her work. In fact, I had an opportunity years ago to visit her shrine that's like outside of Denver. And it was moving, a moving experience for sure. Now, she is buried in New York, as you probably may notice, you may have probably heard in the film. She wants to be buried somewhere, and she was. So hopefully if you ever get an opportunity to visit her shrine in New York, do so. You won't regret it. Something in the movie that you don't forget, because when she arrived on that property, and I believe it was near the Hudson, she said, this is where I'll be buried, and that's exactly what happened. And so, yeah, I encourage all of you who are watching this episode to please do um, make plans, if you can, to visit the shrine, visit her gravesite, and also, most importantly, to intercede to her, right? We can intercede in prayer. You, our audience, are people who are families or individuals who have gone through some kind of an adversity. And so we wanted to present these saints to you during this season of, of 10 saints so that you would have the go-to saints, right? Go to saints for different things in your life. I believe that Mother Cabrini is the patron saint of immigrants, and I'm sure of all kinds of family issues and crisis. Uh, Mickey, what are some more thoughts that you might have on her life and how she's touched you uh, in terms of interceding to her? Well, when I look at um, the story of St. Francis of Cabrini is that, you know, she overcame so much. She, like, I think we touched on it a little bit. Like, earlier in the broadcast, I mentioned that some people were saying, like, it's it's too feminist. Well, here's the thing. St. Francis David Cabrini was shut down by a lot of self-righteous and prideful clergymen, you know, in the church. And politics, to that matter. And, you know, she overcame, she overcame so much. She was determined. The one thing she showed resil- great resilience, especially, you know, helping those that were disenfranchised. And, you know, I mean, I know some people say like, well, you know, she's saying like, well, I'm a woman and everything. I get that. But because like she, de- she had these setbacks, she was never deterred. She never gave up. And I think what we can learn 
from her life is that all things are possible when we rely on God. And that's what she did. That was her life work. Yeah, well said, because she always had the poor in mind, right? And when we think of the poor, of course, we think of people who go without, people who don't have food, people who don't have shelter, water, clothing, whatever that is, whatever else. But the poor are also people that are all around us, just like St. Teresa of Calcutta has always said, you know, find your Calcutta wherever you are, like you said, Mickey. So I think for you who are watching this podcast and thinking to yourself, you know, maybe you're going through something. Maybe you're the one that's feeling kind of like marginalized or rejected. And you can intercede to Mother Cabrini, to St. Francis Xavier Cabrini for yourself, but also for your family. And you can also intercede to her for people that you love because there's people all around us that need us. They need our prayers. They need to know that someone's with them during a challenging time in their lives. And just kind of backtracking what you said at the beginning, I think it was during when we had a little bit of that um, technical difficulty there when the music popped on, was you were talking about the fact that some people who watched the movie said, why weren't there enough religious symbols or her, the mentioning of Jesus, of God, of faith, of prayer, and things like that. And I think the point being is that the movie's audience also were not people who are already in the boat, meaning people who are devoted to their faith and going to mass every week and maybe even daily mass. I think that the audience for this movie was definitely people who are away from their faith or lukewarm or maybe just secular. And it will whet their appetite to find out more about this saint, to, to find out more about the Catholic church and maybe even be inspired for priesthood or religious life, right? It, it could lead to so many things. So I don't know if you want to speak about that, but I do think that this movie um, can help um, not just Catholics, but anybody who watches it, right, Mickey? I mean, that's the way I look at it. You know what, Anne? I think you, you bring up an interesting point because like some films that, uh, don't, don't mind with that, anyway. <laughs> I think one of the things that people have to understand is that that I feel like the filmmakers were trying to figure out their audience. Now, granted, they will get faithful Catholics going out to see the movie, what have you. But I feel like they have to look at the bigger picture, and that is, you know, what about those that fell away from the faith, like you said, Anne? What about those that are not familiar with the Catholic Church efforts to help those that came off the boat from, say, Ireland, Italy, Germany, Poland, um, the Slavic nations, you know, so on and so forth. The, and the keep in mind as well is that, you know, we have to understand what the church did, you know, at the time of the immigration, you know, from the 1840s to about the end of World War II. You know, I mean, it goes back to people like, you know, say St. Saint, Saint John Norman, who spoke six languages, you know, the people. You know, especially when he was a bishop here in Philadelphia. And, you know, he did he did those things. Now, the other thing I like to mention on this broadcast is that many of you may not know this, but there's a biography coming out of St. Francis Xavier Cabrini um, titled Too Small a World, uh, which is written by Theodore Maynard. And I think for a lot of us that want to go beyond the movie, which first of all, I think first and foremost, if you, if like movies could tell you so much, let me put it to you this way, because most movies are like two, two and a half hours and the movie ha can only do so much, but what we, but of course, you know, some of us can go a little deeper and, you know, read the biography of her life. And that's how like, you know, people learn more too. They read biographies, you know, the lives of people, and also what they grew up during that time, or what they endured during this time period. I highly encourage you again. It's called Too Small World, Theodore Maynard. Uh, you could buy it on IgnatiusPress.com. So I just want to put that plug in there. And if anyone, like, I'm sure a lot of us will probably hear stories from our relatives who would tell us, like, 
you know, it wasn't, it was pretty, it was a challenge, you know, when your great, great grandparents grew up and, you know, this, that, and everything. And I think we're kind of seeing that a little bit now, you know, with the present crisis, you know, you got people coming in, you know, and they want to try to make a better life. And of course, I know there's like a lot of controversy surrounding that, but time will tell. But, you know, we are called to like, you know, help those that are less fortunate in our lives. And, you know, like, like Mother Cabrini, you know, you know, she, she is known for a quote, the world is too small for what I'm about to do. And she did those things with determination, courage, faith, but most importantly, charity. Mm, absolutely. Thank you for your reflection there. And it reminds me of when I, I just read this on Catholic.org, just one more little paragraph about her. It says that filled with deep trust in God and endowed with a wonderful administrative ability, which she did have, Francis founded 67 institutions, which I read at the beginning, including orphanages, schools, hospitals, within 35 years, dedicated to caring for the poor, uneducated, sick, abandoned, and especially for the Italian immigrants. Her institutions were spread out in places all over the United States, including New York, Colorado, and Illinois. And then hence you said, you mentioned Denver, where her shrine is. So that's a place of interest for all of you that are watching this. Um, now, I do have to say, as we wrap up, this is the end of not only one part series, but a two part series, right? We already ended the 10 saints. Now it's the end of the 10 Saints part two. And it's also the end right for now of Mickey and I doing regular monthly podcasts because uh, Mickey's going to move on to some other things. He's still board president. We're so, so grateful that he's uh, a really important and big part of this foundation. Um, but he's going to be doing more, um, you know, less frequently doing the podcast, but we never know. We might be back again, right, Mickey? Yeah, God wills it for sure. And um, I guess as we're wrapping this up, and um, I do like to um, offer some words of wisdom. I've done it for the past three years. I mean, it just felt like yesterday we were coming up with this idea to help people that were, I guess, probably trapped in a box, so to speak, with the pandemic, with you know, with the whole fear mongering for the lamestream media and what have you. But it was, an op it was an opportunity for us, you know, to share the faith with people that I guarantee you, maybe like three out of four times, they're most likely going to be like on their computers, they're going to be on a cell phone, you know, and we got to find, we got to meet people where they are, so to speak. But every so often, like we do need to be like in person, like you know, the St. Paul Street Evangelization, what have you. Um, I do want to offer a couple words of wisdom. My first is those that have enjoyed the two part Saints series, and I promise you a part three is coming, but <laughs> we get some rest for now. Yeah. Um, first off, you want to go a little deeper than our podcast? I strongly recommend you get a biography or read an autobiography of a saint. I think it will help you in the long run. Secondly, it's time to you know, spend less time on these little things here, these, this weapon of mass distraction here, as Pope Francis best put it. And I think I was given this lesson a few times that I unfortunately was looking down a little bit. We need to start looking up a little more. If you ever notice, like when Jesus was in the desert, when the devil tried to tempt him and the devil was like wanting him to look down, Jesus gazed was up. He was looking at what was to come because he knew his purpose was higher. Our purpose is what's higher. Blessed uh, Pierre Fassati was one of the subjects of one of our previous podcasts. You know, he said to the heights. And that's what we ought to be doing. That's what we ought to be doing, you know, on our spiritual journey. We need to go to the mountaintop and proclaim that God is good. And all the time, God is good. Additionally, we need to, the reason we also have to look, aim higher is because I once had a colleague that once told my students, the great thing about potential is that it can be reached. 
didn't seem time, it can never be reached. And one of the things that we all need to be doing, you know, as Pope Ben 16 reminds us that remedy of our comfort made for greatness. You see, this is potential right here. You have two options. You can meet it or exceed it. The other thing is you don't meet it. And let's face it. I don't think a lot of us want to be here. We'd rather be here or here. Or a little higher than that. But you know, the point is, we need to exceed our potential. Because we're all create. We each and every one of us were created for a purpose. And I know a lot of us are trying to figure it all out. And so be it. But it's going to take a lot of, a lot of prayer. A lot of spiritual direction. But... Never give up on what God has placed in your life. Never forget that you're his child first. Never forget that you're part of a you're part of something bigger than what this world is offering you. And only God can show you that way because he's the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Thank you so much. And thank you, Mickey, too, for your leadership and for doing so many of these podcasts and for your wisdom. You have such great wisdom, and we're grateful for you and for your being a part of, the, of such a big part of this foundation. I want to remind all of you, too, um, to stay tuned on this channel because we will have some great new podcasts coming up on the Philly Nonatus YouTube channel. Mickey, thank you so much again. I just want to add one more thing and we'll sign off here. Sure. Uh, for those of you who would like to, uh, I give um, a weekly video on a uh, mm. YouTube channel called The Catholic Philadelphian. Um, everyone is welcome to subscribe to that channel on YouTube, um, share my contact with people, especially those who has fallen away from the faith. Because let's face it, the church is not alive if it's missing two things. Babies crying from the congregation and two more the new, more more people praying for vocation not just for marriage but for religious and priesthood well said thank you and again i also want to reiterate that about the catholic philadelphian youtube channel that i would suggest that subscribe and you can see mickey all the time on his weekly reflections so to all of you, we will see you next time here with the St. Raymond Anatis Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. God bless. Thank you. Take care.